Greetings, this is Brian Forrester of Hidden Inca Tours, and this is the interior of the great Egyptian museum in Cairo. Now, Jason here, who was on our recent tour in March 2018, is inspecting this giant granite unfinished box. And what's amazing about this is we'll see obvious signs of lost ancient high technology, like that saw mark you see in the center of the video. Now, I think on purpose, they pushed this unfinished box against a wall so that you wouldn't inspect these amazing saw marks. But what we see are two circular saws working, one on top, one on the bottom, obviously powered by some kind of machine, and rapidly cutting through this granite, which is 7 out of 10 on the hardness scale, with diamond being 10. You can see that the top saw started to veer off course, cutting into the main part of the block, and then it wound up <coughs> snapping half of the lid off. The lid was going to be from the same piece of stone, from the bottom, to be placed on the top. And now, right next to it, we see another granite box, and this is a different type of saw working, almost like a bandsaw. Again, clearly working at high speed, and in terms of modern technology, that would require diamonds, a diamond encrusted blade. Such a thing did not exist during dynastic times, so we have to consider the idea that these saw marks are from a much older civilization that had lost ancient high technology. Here again, the multiple saw marks. And then somewhat nearby is this basalt box. And what you can tell from here, again, is that the box itself had to have been made using advanced technology. And this object was found by the dynastic Egyptians, and then they simply carved these shallow vertical lines into the surface, probably with relatively crude tools, possibly Bronze Age, maybe even iron, but the lightness of the lines means that uh, they were done more recently than the shaping of the box itself. So for the moment, that's it for the first floor of the museum, and now we're going upstairs to visit the second floor. And what we first encounter are a number of wooden sarcophagi. But as we go to explore the sarcophagi, we encounter one of the most enigmatic of all objects in the museum. Aside from this 10 foot long wooden sarcophagus, of which there are at least two, were there people actually that tall who fit in these sarcophagi? But what we encounter is the amazing so-called schist disc, and we'll go more into detail with that after we observe another one or two of the massive sarcophagi made out of wood from the dynastic period. Here are normal size ones between five feet and six feet tall. And then this huge one, which is 10 to 12 feet tall. Is it simply a symbolic sarcophagus? So back to the so-called schist disc. It's called a schist disc because the archeologists believe that it was made out of a stone called schist but our geologist, Susan Moore, who is an expert, of course, on stone, believes that it's actually metamorphosed clay of some kind. That would mean that it would be very, very dense um, and also would be able to resonate. So this object, whatever it was, clearly rotated. And, but uh, the strange thing is that the fins, three of them that you see there, don't angle. So 
It isn't apparent whether it was pulling or pushing air or water. Maybe it was simply made to set up some kind of vibration. So when we look at the profile here, unfortunately it was found broken and very badly repaired. But again, you can see it's a very complex piece of work. And it was found along in a cache with 30,000 to 40,000 turned very hard stone bowls and plates that could only have been made using lathes of some kind. And even the labels on these objects state that they're likely from the pre-dynastic or archaic period. So here's an approach again to the so-called schist disk. They put it here so that the sun shines on it, I think on purpose, so that it's very difficult to properly photograph. The fact that it's even still on display is quite amazing because it's very much an anomalous object <clears throat> which does not fit into either the time frame or the technology of the dynastic Egyptians. And here are some of the turned objects. These, again, are likely quite hard stone, and you can see they're perfectly bilaterally symmetrical, so they would have had to have been made on lathes. Since the archaeologists are stating that these are from the Archaic period, that means that they were constructed prior to the invention of the potter's wheel. And a lathe is a far more complex machine than a potter's wheel. These could have been partially made on a lathe and then partially hand done because of the strange spouts that project off. But this uh, fascinating object that has five lobes, um, again, appears to have been made at least partially on some kind of ancient lathe device. And these are very hard granite, cyanite, and diorite bowls and other vessels that could only have been made, again, on a lathe of some kind. Now the idea that, they, uh, that the lathes were operated by foot or hand are quite ridiculous because in order to properly shape something like this, you have to have relatively high speed. So that means some kind of motor or engine would be involved. And those did not exist during the dynastic time period. And once again, many more of these objects. There are approximately 50 on display. But again, the cache that was found at Saqqara, um, the number of objects found was between 30,000 and 40,000. Many of them were found damaged or broken, and others unfinished. And here are some pottery vessels. These are from the dynastic time period. So it's very interesting that the ones that were turned on the lathe are even listed as being pre-dynastic, and yet these relatively crude pottery ones are from the later dynastic period. So what it's telling us, including this fascinating object here, is that the, the history of Egypt is far older and far more complex than most academics will state. And that's why these objects sitting in plain sight are fascinating and show us that it's very possible that there was a high-tech civilization existing 12,000 plus years ago in Egypt and that these objects were inherited by the later dynastic people. What was this object? It looks like a flange of some kind. And note again that pieces are broken off. This damage appears to have happened 
in the very deep past because a high percentage of these objects are broken and they were supposedly found in a massive pile altogether in an underground space. These are boomerangs that are on display. Is it possible that the dynastic Egyptians invented the boomerang or could these objects have in fact come from Australia where the more famous history of boomerangs we know of? And then this very strange object. It's apparently made out of very hard granite once again and the tool marks that we see where these circles are appear to be machine marks. What it's used or what it was used uh, during dynastic times for, I don't know, but again it seems to be an object that was inherited by the dynastic Egyptians. Notice the strange burn marks on it. The burn marks could very well have come from a cataclysm that occurred globally about 12,000 years ago. It not only affected sites in Egypt, but we see ample evidence in Peru, Bolivia, and other locations that have megalithic structures. And why is it that all of the large granite boxes appear to have significant damage, especially in the corners? And now, this other object on the first floor has obvious tube drill holes. Again, this is granite containing quartz crystal. In order to be able to produce a drill that could cut through this, you need to have at least diamond level technology. And now we're in what's called the Amarna section, which is where we find the collection of statues and other works of Akhenaten, who personally is my favorite of the pharaohs. Here he is portrayed as being androgynous, possibly. It is believed by some experts on Akhenaten that he physically did look different from the average human being, and he simply told his artisans, portray me as I am. That shows that he had a high level of personal confidence. And here we have a classic portrayal of the Aten sun god with Akhenaten with possibly an elongated head. And there's Nefertiti on the left. And here we have the famous busts of his daughters, including Meritaten, who obviously is shown with an elongated head. And here, another view. It's amazing that only about a year ago we were allowed to start taking photographs and filming inside this museum. Before that, it was illegal. But that's what's happening in Egypt. So please consider joining us in April 2019. So these are related books of mine at Amazon.com. Lost Ancient Technology of Egypt. Um, I'm going to be producing Volume 2 soon of this book. Then Aftershock, The Ancient Cataclysm That Erased Human History. This is all about the ancient cataclysm 12,000 years ago. And The Enigma of Cranial Deformation by David Hatcher Childress and myself. And Akhenaten, The Heretic Pharaoh. So these are upcoming events happening in Irvine, California, Sedona, Arizona, and Boulder, Colorado. In Irvine, I'll be giving this talk, and then this one will be in Sedona, and finally a full day event in Boulder. And this is the link to those talks happening late May, early June 2018. Also, upcoming tours at hiddenincatours.com. Contact in the Desert, June 2018. And Advanced Technologies and Wisdom of the Ancients Tour in India in January 2019.